Welcome to the Total Boss Podcast, and I'm your host, Cristiano Green, a podcast where we talk about finding fulfillment through self-development, being a leader of your own life, and getting the most out of it as well. Tenacity, originality, talent, authenticity, and being legendary. It's all about living your best life. Hello, 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 all you total bosses out there, and welcome to another episode of the Total Boss Podcast. Now, I am your host, Christiana Green, and I am a mindset and transformation coach working with gay men to help them transform their trauma into triumph so they can live a more confident, more fulfilled, and more free life. Now, this week's episode is all about Mardi Gras. So happy Mardi Gras season for all of you people over in Australia. Now, Mardi Gras has been around since 1978. So that is a quite a long time, a lot longer than, you know, I was born and many of you guys out there who were born there. And, you know, it all started back in a time where, you know, homosexuality was a crime, right? And, you know, the people that actually decided to go and do the first march were actually trying to raise, you know, issues so that they could actually work on the decriminalization of homosexuality. You know, it was also around the anniversary of when they had the Stonewall riots, which was in New York. And it's just about more about trying to, to, to bring light, um, a bit more pride, in, in, in our community, right? And so this uh, happened in 1978 and they did a, they, they did the first march, which was up, you know, Oxford Street. And really when it first started, it was probably only, a, you know, a couple of hundred people that you, you did the, did the march. Um, and, you know, really what was happening around that time was that, you know, there was a lot of police attacks happening on gays and women and blacks, etc. And so they really tried to march as a protest to try to bring some light to these issues. And, you know, throughout the whole um, process, you know, police were harassing the, the float and, um, they, you know, they ended up getting confiscated and a lot of people got arrested for it. And, you know, it was even quite full on where, um, you know, even some of the people, you know, who were actually marching, you know, got outed by people who were in the media. They, they, they posted in like the news about it. So it was this really, um, awesome like march for people to just to start to say, fuck you guys. You can't tell me how, who I can love and how I should live my life and stop trying to control the narrative. So really there's a lot of deep history in um, Mardi Gras Parade um, when it first started back in 1978. Now for me, you know, I, I wasn't always so deeply understanding um, of the history of Mardi Gras. Um, and, you know, for me Mardi Gras was definitely um, a big kind of uh, – party for me, right? You know, when I first started going there, you know, 15 years ago, you know, it was around the time where I was first kind of coming out, understanding who I am. I think I went to the first, my first Mardi Gras before I was fully out, right? I was kind of still, you know, bisexual, right? <laughs> um, funny, right? That's how, how some of us come out, right? Is by being bisexual. But yeah, that was the first time I went to it. And, you know, it kind of was um, amazing to see how different the city can be because really, you know, I think Mardi Gras in Sydney is probably one of the biggest gay prides in the world and it's actually probably one of the biggest and most loved now you know festivals that we have in australia it brings in you know tens and thousands of you know tourists every single year um and really like i said what what they do is it's usually now it's part of a bigger season now that you know they have a fair day which is kind of like a little festival down in victoria park they have the parade they have the after party they have all these other things on that are you know trying to bring in the the the, the lgbt plus community so they have you know art and film festivals um supporting you know people within our community artists who are creating things like that so it's very creative as well so there's so much into the season now and each year kind of adds to more different flavors you know, a lot of comedy stuff, a lot of drag shows, of course. You know, really, it's just like um, something in the air when you do it. So when I first went to it, I really just, you know, went and watched the parade and then kind of went partying because, you know, back in that day, that was really what, you know, how I was introduced to, to the gay life was through the party scene. So for me, I thought it was just another amazing opportunity just to have a huge party weekend, right, and really just do it with, you know, feeling like, you know, we were supported, right, as, as gay men, considering, you know, I've been bullied for so much of my life. It was it was a really beautiful experience, you know. So I remember going to the parade and then going to the after party, which was at Fox Studios, and then I just never missed it, you know. Some of the years I um, 
would just go to, and I, I would, you know, volunteer in the, in the parade and I would be someone who's just, um, helping out with what they need to do to organize it and making sure that the, you know, the crowd stay where they're supposed to be and, you know, checking the different points, etc. Also helped out with the media section to make sure that the people who were doing media could get to where they needed to go so they could get the, you know, the photos and interviews if they needed to. So done a lot of volunteering as well, especially in the last couple of years because I really wanted to give back and, and be a part of it as well and see it from a different light because usually by the time it would start I'd probably already be fucked up right because we would be partying from the Friday and that would continue on all Saturday and then all Saturday night and then Sunday etc so it would be a huge 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 party weekend so it also kind of kept me in line when I did it in the last few years um when I when I actually went and joined the you know volunteered there because obviously you know when you're working you're not going to be partying so you really just made when I started that, that, you know, going to the party afterwards, you know, the party would start at 10 or 11 instead of, you know, 10 a.m., right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I've done that as well. But I've also been in the parade um, in different floats over the years. I've been in three different parades and um, really loved that experience of actually marching in there as well um, and supporting, you know, what we believe in, right, and actually feeling the love from everyone around you. And when you get to parade around, you get, you know, you're with a whole group of people. So it's like this big, massive day as well where you get to connect, you get to grow, and, you know, you get to dress up and wear some fun things as well and really celebrate you know, that pride that you feel for yourself because love is love, right? So really getting to go out and do those things has been a huge part of, you know, my last 10, 15 years. And this is the first time, you know, since I first came out that I actually am not in Sydney for Mardi Gras. I'm not going to be properly celebrating it because, you know, I'm here living in Bali now, which is a different lifestyle. But, you know, it just make me reminisce on all those memories when I'm, you know, in the, in the Mardi Gras season. And so, you know, getting to, you know, come on here and have a discussion about Mardi Gras and what it means to me um, is really important because, you know, over the last couple of years when it was COVID, you know, things had to shift and change um, a lot. And last year was the first time where they didn't actually have the the, the march all the way up Oxford Street, um, down Flinders Street. They just, they actually did it in the Sydney cricket ground and they did the march around the actual, um, around the ground. So you, you'd get tickets and you, 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 as if you were watching like I guess a football or cricket match, right? And they would do the parade there. So it was, they, they really figured out a way to do it still so they can still have the Mardi Gras on um, but obviously there was no parties on at that time because of COVID but this year you know I think it's still in that in that same spot but I believe that you know the parties are on and things are back on on track which is great because you know the the, the, the nightlife which is really where a lot of gay men got to express themselves and feel themselves and be around other gay men um, you know really got affected so to see that that's back now for a lot of people of places around the world that's really you know an important part because that's how I got to really come into my own was through you know the party scene and you know of course you know it has its ups and downs because you know I got caught up in the drinking and the drugs and all of those things but really I was able to find myself throughout throughout the midst of all of that stuff and really heal myself from all the the trauma and kind of you know and have under, other people who understood my journey and what it was like for someone like me so it's really interesting to actually be able to, you know, look back on your journey of all the years of Mardi Gras because I've been to, you know, the party every year. I've been to the parade every year. Like I said, I've been, a, a, you know, watching it. I've been there volunteering in it. I've been there marching there. And like I said, it's different experiences each way you do it. And it's about really what you want to get out of the experience, like I said, because, you know, now that they make it a whole, you know, period, it's like a two, three week thing where they have all these different things. It's, it's just making that awareness to, to other people, you know, there because visibility is important, right? And having these things out there, especially for people who are in different areas and feeling really, you know, unconfident in who they are. And you can go on TV and you can watch this Mardi Gras parade and you can see all the love and pride that people have. It helps people more than you know, right? Um, I never really Really got to see it because I know that, you know, as a, as a young gay man, you know, when I was repressed, I would hide away from ever watching anything like that because I didn't want anyone to ever think of this of me. So I never got to experience it until I actually got to experience it by being there. I didn't even really understand or know about it um, at all. So when I, when I first got to, 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 to be in it, you know, it was all about me, but now it's more all about the community. It's all about the people that I'm serving. And it's all about really understanding what's the, the, the stuff behind it that is super, super important because there is such a big history when it comes to Mardi Gras, right? Those first couple of years were all in protest. There was still a lot of, like I said, hatred towards gay people that was, you know, it was criminalized, right? And the, the, these people 
back then stood up for themselves in so many ways. People got arrested, people got attacked. You know, it's not like that、uh, as much anymore. It's obviously a lot better, but it still has its. You know, it's it, there's still people out there who discriminate against you. And so the fact that you know back in eighty two was when you know there was the. Amendment to the Anti Discrimination Act, making it illegal to you know discriminate against gays and lesbians, right? So you know over the years they fought for these rights so that we here today could live our life the way that we're choosing to. Of course, there's so much further to go, and that's what I'm here for. That's part of my mission is to bring equality to people within our community, completely across the whole LGBTQIA plus community, so that people can go out there and feel love and feel like they have the opportunity to be who they are and not get judged by who they love. So that when you know when we come to the next generation, that people don't have to come out, right? Because the whole coming out phase really fucks up people sometimes, right? And so having people not have to need to do that. Is where I'm going to get to when it comes to fighting and, and doing what I do when it comes to you know coaching and you know speaking publicly and mentoring people. It's just all about that for me. It's about really allowing the next group of people to not have the need to do that, to not have to go through the same issues, to not have the same problems when it comes to mental health, to not have to feel like you have to hide who you are, to feel like you have to come out right because it's up to you to figure out how you want to live your life. But you shouldn't be judged by other people for doing that. So really, there's a lot going on when it comes. To what it is, it's a beautiful season. I love it so much, and you know, I'm going to miss it this year for the first time. But I'm, you know, I know in my heart that I'll be back there next year to to celebrate it because I really feel like it's something that I enjoy. And I think next year it's actually going to be, you know, World Pride there as well. So you know, World Pride is something that goes to different cities around the world. Next year it's going to be going to Sydney, so I'll 100% make sure that I'm going to be back in Sydney so I can celebrate. That season again, a season that I love, and the season as as to why I I loved living in Sydney for so long was 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 because of the gay scene and, and because I got to come into my own. And Mardi Gras is just a great、um, moment for that. So I'd love to hear、um, a bit about maybe your Mardi Gras journey, like what you love about the Mardi Gras season. What are things that got you into it? Did it actually did you did you know about Mardi Gras before you came out? Like, was it something that helped you? Like, really share some of your thoughts on on Mardi Gras because I'd love to hear from you some of your stories because I love to hear from you guys. So feel free to share, feel free to ask any questions, leave comments. You can continue the conversation with me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, etc. But、uh, I'm going to go off and celebrate a little bit myself, and I'll let you go. And I'll be back here with another episode next week. But always, always. Always remember before I leave that you have got this and I've got you.